So, um, it may have escaped some of your keen notice, but I'm not, in fact, Dr. Narula, um, who many of you will know has been the chair of the WASH Working Group for many years and is sadly no longer with Water Aid Bangladesh, where he was based. So, I am not the chair, I'm the coordinator within Water Aid, a uh, senior poli policy analyst on health, and I do a lot of the cholera and infectious disease work. So, I'm here to uh, just describe what we've done over the last year. Also, like Lucy, I did not include the top line foci for the WASH working group. So like the other technical working groups, we are here to provide normative and technical guidance on WASH related topics. But because WASH is uh, an inherently cross-cutting and multi-sectoral piece of work, we also identify WASH specific needs and support cross-cutting initiatives, including research, critically advocacy, and also training. Um, and we're very keen to do cross-pillar work as well, which I'll come on to in just a moment. So over the last cycle, we've had a number of achievements, and I think Philippe said it just right earlier in the day where he said it's not the GTFCC and the partners, we are all the GTFCC, so these represent delivery with and through the partners of the WASH Technical Working Group. The first is that we published environmental surveillance guidance. This is a technical guidance collaboration between WASH and LAB, which I think you've already seen mentioned on one of the previous slides. Also mentioned earlier in the day was the UN Water Conference joint side event with Solidarité Internationale, um, which ultimately culminated also in a call to action in the Water Action Agenda. We had a major influencing success earlier in the year when we raised the profile of WASH at the African Union-led high-level emergency ministerial meeting on cholera epidemics. I believe there's actually a longer title. It took in other climate-related public health emergencies. Um, critically important. We'll come on to that in a moment. There was a fantastic partner resource on testing and treatment strategies that could be used in different settings. And in addition to this, there was a huge amount of partner action research that sought to grow the evidence base on WASH for cholera control. Finally, we have another piece of really accessible WASH-oriented guidance that's intended to support NCP development in countries which are not CSP-focused countries. However, there were a number of interrelated challenges over the last year, and some of these will be very familiar from the other presentations and certainly to anyone who is here this morning. Um, the first is not at all unique to the WASH working group, but we certainly saw reduced partner capacity and, as a result, involvement. This is in the context not only of the ongoing cholera crisis, but of the many competing crises facing the partner organizations. There's certainly a need in the coming year, not only to revitalize the membership, but also to grow it and bring in new partners, as I think Bruce talked about this morning, really critical. Really closely interlinked with this is the growing impact of climate change on cholera and on WASH. And I think we heard this morning from my colleague in Malawi that there's a real w risk of WASH backsliding as we see continued and intensified climate disasters. There's a lack of coherence between the emergency response and development approaches. And this is not only at the government level, but we also see it in our partner organizations and in the donors who support our work. And certainly not least, but very interrelated to my last point, was the disconnection between the high-level political will that we see around cholera control and the lack of prioritization and the operational of that operationalization of that prioritization through finance that's really needed for WASH at the national level. Looking ahead to the next 12 months, we're going to stratify our, in, our uh, engagement across three different levels. The first is what we take forward within our WASH working group. The second is how we collaborate across the pillars of the GTFCC. And the third is who, how we partner with national and multilateral stakeholders beyond this group. So for within the technical working group, our intention is to focus on just a few high impact work streams. And these are water quality monitoring through which we'll target guidance development and national engagement. We've heard a lot today about WASH data, not only the need to strengthen the global data picture through JMP, but also the need for more granular data at the national and subnational level. And this is absolutely needed to guide impactful intervention. And finally, we'll continue to work closely with the CSP and with some of the other partners and pillars to strengthen and implement the WASH components of the NCPs, which we know and have heard today are the secret to long-lasting and long-term cholera prevention, control, and ultimately elimination. Beyond the WASH working group, 
it's absolutely imperative that we improve the integration and collaboration with the other pillars as well as with the advocacy task team. Part of this has to happen through cross-cutting cross integration of research, case studies, and crucially, advocacy activities. It's not enough to have the evidence. We have to get the evidence out there in front of the right people in a format that's compelling to them. We've also heard a lot about climate change today, and we're very keen to continue contributing to the development of the climate annex of the research agenda, which is going to be so important going forward. And finally, certainly not least, it's very important that we address the underprioritization and lack of integration of WASH at the national levels, which is the real locus for change and implementation of programs. We need to build the investment case, and by the investment case, I mean the narrative, I mean the data, I mean maybe tapping into some of the different modalities, modalities we've talked about today, such as the overlay mapping of cholera hotspots and other kinds of products that will speak to the people who control the budgets and set the agendas for the year. We need to integrate WASH into these national budget cycles and we need to build the relationships with the relevant ministries, not only the WASH ministries and not only the health ministries. And finally, with these investment cases and these different kinds of research products, it's absolutely critical that we do more engagement with the MDBs and other donors to ensure that when they make investments, they're targeted and cholera sensitive. That's all from me, thank you very much. Thank you.